Series, anything can happen. Welcome to ESPN's continuing coverage of the Little League World Series presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Today from South Williamsport, it's an elimination game. Japan, the defending champion for the last six years, these boys have won the title, facing elimination against the boys from Curacao. No room for air here. It is Elimination Saturday, the first Saturday of two here at the Little League World Series. Next Sunday, we will crown a winner. A quick rules set before we start today's game. 16 teams are here, eight from the U.S., eight from around the world. All players between the ages of 10 and 13. The games last six innings, and it is Little League, so everyone plays here. Hello again and welcome back to the Anchor Desk here at the Little League World Series from South Williamsport, Pennsylvania. An absolutely beautiful day here. 83 degrees, blue sky and sunshine. And the safety net is gone for the eight teams that will play today. Four have already played their elimination game. Two more elimination games to go. Lose today and you are no longer in contention for the Little League World Series title. Let's catch you up to date with what's happened so far. The first elimination game, Mexico and Italy. You will not see a sweeter swing than the one Gael Cortez put on that home run ball as Mexico avoids elimination with the 12-7 win. And then it was Kenny Ricks getting it done for Rhode Island as they fight off elimination, beating Oregon final score 8-0. So all the teams you see on the top there at 1-0, well, they didn't have to play today. That's a big advantage of winning your first game. The winners will all be in action tomorrow. Today, all the 0-1s, and so far, Oregon and Italy, by virtue of losing their second game, no longer in title contention, but it is Rhode Island and Mexico clinging to life here with still another loss before they're eliminated. The two games remaining today, Japan in a very unfamiliar spot. They'll play next against Curacao. Japan winners last year, and then in the U.S. elimination game, California and Texas, two of the states with perhaps the most success on the U.S. side at the Little League World Series. One of them will be eliminated after tonight's game. But right now, let's get you over to Volunteer Stadium for our call. Our announced team, Dave Fleming, John Cook, and Marisol Castro. Dave? All right, thank you, Jay. What a beautiful afternoon turning to evening here at Volunteer Stadium. And this is indeed a fascinating matchup, an elimination game on the international side, Japan and Curacao. And hi, everybody. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Dave Fleming alongside John Kruk. I don't think anybody anticipated that this would be a matchup in an elimination game, particularly for Japan, the team that's a defending champion, the country that is. They've had so much success. Uncharacteristic now. They ran up against a good team, Canada, but uncharacteristic play from Japan. Yeah, they ran up against a buzzsaw pitcher for, for Canada that just dominated their lineup. But I think it was the pressure of, the, of offensively, the base running of Canada, that kind of flustered this team that's usually unflappable. Un Characteristic mistakes for this team from Japan. They have to clean it up because you have to think that if Kurosawa was watching that game, they're going to be as aggressive on the bases and force Japan to make plays. Well, and I definitely don't think Japan thought, hey, if we lose our first game, we're going to face a team as good as Kurosawa in an elimination game. This is a league that has won the Little League World Series before just over a decade ago. They've got talented players, and same kind of story. They ran up against a very powerful South Korea team. And, and that's what this thing, this tournament is all about. You run into a hot pitcher, there's a good chance you're going to be playing in the loser's bracket, but this team struck out 15 times yesterday to Kurosawa, so they have to think we can't see any better pitching than we saw yesterday so they have to have some confidence coming in against this tough team from Japan 
Pretty big time matchup in a Saturday elimination game. Japan and Curacao game three of the day and first pitch when we come back. A fight! <laughs> Little League World Series is presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes Cereal. They're great! And in part by Odyssey from Honda, official vehicle of Little League. What a night in Williamsport and what a matchup in an elimination game. Japan considered one of the heavy favorites and their Little League World Series title hopes are on the line against a good team from Curacao, the kids from uh, Japan, uh, from that giant city, one of the world's great cities, Tokyo, the world's biggest metropolitan area, Chofu Little League, the capital of Japan, home of the Imperial family, host of the 2020 Olympic Games. A great group of kids, and let's meet the team from Japan, brought to you by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes.岩田博和です。私の名前は遠藤亮太です。好きな選手はマイクトラウト選手です。僕の名前は平尾壮です。好きな選手は岩熊久志選手です。私の名前は池本凛です。私の好きな選手は田中正宏です。僕の名前は
It'll be a Chris Bauer 10 minute game of one nothing. One and one here to Moria. Who butts it out in front of the plate. And a throw to third goes into left field. And now the runner who went into a slide will stay there, but there was nobody at second, so heads up by Moria. He makes it to second base. Yeah, that's what happens on a bunt play. You know, first baseman charge, third baseman charge. Uh, you know, we know the catcher, Josepa, has a great arm. And again, we see it again. A, another throwaway ball from the catcher to third. And, but, you know, when you have the second baseman going to cover first, the shortstop's going to cover third, you can't expect the outfielders to get in that quick. The batter just says, you know what, I'm going to keep going around. Now they got second and third, no outs, and the potential to have a big inning. Well, they will give an error to Donovan Antonio, the catcher, who is a big, strong kid with a powerful arm. And you know he's got confidence in it. But maybe in the first inning, just taking the out. Been the, the better choice because now it's that situation you're talking about. Riota Endo, the third place hitter. Yeah, and that's, you know, we know how little he works. Your third, fourth, fifth hitters, you know, one through five are probably are your best hitters. And now you put in a situation where three, four, five have a chance to drive in multiple runs. Well, just think back to yesterday and the way the game started for Japan. They played defense first and were a little sloppy. Canada managed to get two runs across. They were down two nothing. That's a breaking ball for a strike. It's one and two. So then they come up in the bottom of the first inning. Hey, no big deal. It's two runs. And they watch Loreto strike out the side on 10 pitches, throwing 80 miles an hour. And didn't fool with the anything off speed. I mean, it was just gas after gas after gas. And then I, it, it, he just, I've never seen Japanese hitters overmatch like they were in that first inning. And I, re I really think the whole tone of the game changed after that bottom of the first yesterday for Japan. One two is a little bit high and yeah, the way the ball was coming out of the pitcher from Canada yesterday. It was one of those games where you know. Once they scored in the first inning and after you saw what he did in the first inning he's thinking to himself well this game's over the Japanese team just doesn't know it yet. And he was. Incredible. Built That's a huge. Just like that breaking ball. Big strikeout for out number one. Let's welcome in Marisol Castro. Marisol. Hey, good evening, you guys. Spoke to the manager before the game. He said yesterday that was not my team. They were incredibly nervous. So today it's a walk. 30 minute walk. They took some BP. And then he said he just wanted them to relax. At around 4 o'clock, all the families went up to the grove. They brought over a traditional Japanese meal of rice cakes and tea. He said the kids looked a lot calmer today. We're much more mentally prepared for this game, and I think we're starting to see that now. So, different team today than they saw yesterday, for sure. Tatsuya Suzuki, the left fielder. Now to count one and one after that pitch a little bit up and outside. Here's the schedule today. Up for a walk at 6.30, the breakfast, the practice. I thought I passed them on the street you know, when I was taking my job this morning at 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a daily occurrence for you, Crocky. <laughs> <laughs> I got running shoes from 20 years ago, still have great tread on them. I didn't want to wear them out, but this is huge for Japan. I, you know, for them, you know, the way they played yesterday, they have second and third no outs. You got one strikeout on your number three hitter without scoring a run. If they come out of this with, without scoring a run, they, you have to think, well, you know, as confident as they were, now it could be like, oh, well, what's going on with us? Pretty close pitch. I think the fans for Curacao wanted that one. That called the ball. Three and two. I think you're right about that. You can say what you want about, hey, everybody's in a better frame of mind. Get off to a great start, and that sort of is reinforced. And who knows? That is another good curve from Josepa. Well, Josepa is starting to dial in that breaking ball. And that's what you see a lot in Little League. You know, we'll establish the fastball. We'll try to put you away with the breaking ball. And so far, so good. And this is where you think, okay, okay, I just struck two guys out. You can't let up now. You got you to keep it going right here and try to finish this inning without giving up a run. Strike one with the fastball. Rin Ikemoto, who was the starting pitcher for Japan yesterday, wears that honored traditional number 18. Dodgers fan, they've had a great history of Japanese players. 0 oh, 2. Oh, 
Well, Curacao thinking, hey, maybe we can get out of this thing. And I tell you, I, I don't know if I would go to this breaking ball right now. I think I might stay on that fastball away. He did. And just did not quite get it on the corner. Now you saw the catcher, Antonio. He moved outside just a little bit more on that one, hoping he can, you know, finesse the umpire into, into giving him a call. He didn't. Now let's see what they do one and two. They use the curve. Ikemoto, kind of a little bloop, and it will be caught. What a play. Gerangelo Sayenche, the ambidextrous shortstop. A heck of a play to save two runs. Yeah, an unbelievable play. Look at the range from the young shortstop to keep Japan off the board, Dave. Beautifully done by the kid. We saw a pitch with both hands yesterday. He can do it all. Well, the fans from Curacao, a lot to be excited about. They get out of a jam with some beautiful defense in the top of the first to keep it scoreless, and now they'll bat in the last half of the first inning from Willetstad, Curacao, that great island country just north of Venezuela, home of many big leaguers, including Kenley Jansen, Jonathan Scope, Jurks, and Profar. Great place, beautiful country, and great kids. Let's meet the kids from Curacao. My name is Donovan Antonia. And my favorite player is Jurek Sanprufa. Hi, my name is Kavima Yubi, and my favorite player is Didi Gregorius. Hi, my name is Jason Bianchi, and my favorite player is Didi Gregorius. Hi, my name is Jurangelo Sainte. My favorite baseball player is Jonathan Scope. Hi, my name is Azif Hernandez. My favorite player is Jonathan Scope. My name is Jason Josefa, and my favorite player is Andrelton Simmons. Hi, my name is Alan Minolander, and my favorite player is Didi Gregorius. Hi, my name is Nayeria Manika. My favorite player is Kelly Johnson. Hi, my name is Shakira Sefa. My favorite player is Emmer Simmons. Hi, my name is Egori Manuela. My favorite player is Kelly Johnson. Hi, my name is Hida Marlin. My favorite player is Jonathan Scope. Hi, then. my name is Christopher Marshall. My favorite player is Anton Simmons. Hi, my name is Daniela Valentina. My favorite player is Kelly Johnson. Hi, my name is Michael Wilchers. My favorite player is Ken Janssen. So here is the pitcher that Team Curacao will face, Sosuke Igawa, the left-hander, 12 years old. He starts for Japan. I hate to say it's the biggest start of his career, but this is the biggest start of his career. But you know, again, a lefty, we don't see a lot of left-handed pitchers in this Little League World Series, but you know, again, what you would expect from a pitcher from Japan. Great mechanics, fastball, curveball. And I, you know, Krucky, you pointed it out right at the top, and I think it was a good point. They were sloppy with the wild pitches, with the extra bases they gave away. And that's the kind of stuff they need to clean up. Gerangelo Sainche, the shortstop who made that tremendous play to end the top of the first. Uh, you see what Sanchi wants to do. He wants to bunt first play. You know, first first pitch. Let's make him see if they can make plays. Yeah. Put some pressure on that defense. He takes a strike. So Gawa evens the count of one and one. Sainche yesterday was a very aggressive hitter. He's a switch pitcher. We talked a lot about that. He is also, as you would guess, a switch hitter. Although he's batting lefty against lefty, so he's decided not to do it here, which is interesting. And maybe he's not as confident from the right side. Maybe if he gets you know, ahead in the count 3 0 3 1, he might switch over right hand and get that power swing going. Well, who knows? Who knows? He hits that one hard to second. Pick clean, though. Sato throws him out. And that's a better start for Japan, much more like what we're used to seeing from them. Yeah, fundamentals. Uh, you just. You know, ball hit very hard. One step to his right, he just takes that step over, squares it up, makes a great easy catch and easy throw to get Sinche out. I, one of my favorite parts every year in Williamsport is watching the team from Japan take infield. Oh, man. How is that? Just take fielding, how coordinated and choreographed it is, how fast-paced it is. The one out, and Nair Hamadika, the left fielder. Takes a strike. One of the 11 year olds here. There are only 10 of them between the 16 teams. So he is one of the youngest players in Williamsport. Elimination game on the international side. That was almost like a changeup. 
and that's something we don't see a lot of, which you, you would think that it would be taught to more kids. Fastball changeup, you know, two Hall of Fame pitchers, Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin. That was basically their repertoire. Sosuke Igawa, the 0-2, and he tried to get the call. You see where that catcher, Akira Jozawa, sets up. <laughs> How do you think the umpire, umpire feels? He's fully exposed. No kidding. There's when no. Jozawa moves that far out. And a little closer this time to the outside corner. And he got him to chase in the dirt. Got to make the throw, and he did. Nice job by Jozawa. Two down. I think this is something we anticipated, a more clean play game. You know, two teams that are very fundamentally sound and, and like we said, this, I don't think this is going to be a, a, a 10 run rule or, or a, a high scoring game by either team. The two outs here is big, strong Donovan Antonia. He's the catcher. He's the third place hitter. And he likes to swing hard. Wow, he got the low strike there with the breaking ball. Okay, if I was as big as this young man, I think I'd swing hard too. Look at, I mean, that's a, that's a man. That's, that's a specimen right there with the bat in his hand. He got a lot of strength. It's that one to short and not handled cleanly. And I don't know, even if that was fielded cleanly, I'm not sure that he was going to throw out the fast running Antonio. Yeah, I don't think he would have either, but that's a ball right there. We've seen this. I've seen this a lot in the Little League. Watch his big hop. Instead of coming in and trying to catching it on that long hop or easier play, a, sh a short hop, once you start backing up on the ball like he's doing right there, almost impossible to make that play. And even if he did, like you said, runner safe at first. They do score that as an error. Here's Hedon Marlin, second baseman, cleanup hitter. Taking low. By the way, Ricky Castle is our home plate umpire. Marlin, who's 12 years old, our all volunteer umpire crew. Six man crew for this game and every game in Williamsport. Tried to curve that breaking ball over the outside. Missed. There's Ricky. Rest of our crew. 2 0. 3 0. The opposite innings. First two get on for Japan, they don't score. First two batters for Curacao, outs, and now we got an error and 3 0 count on the four hitter. Look where his left foot is. You're right. <laughs> out of the batter's box. Takes a walk. At least close to out of it. So two two out base runners. And a little tight spot for Sosuke Igawa. With Alamine Hollander, the first baseman. I think that's smart too to move up on the plate. Igawa is yet to throw anything close to inside the righties. Yeah, remember the first hitter, Seinche, threw the first pitch fastball in. I think that's just, that's just where his arm slot is, and you got to make the adjustment. Now that curveball you can get in there. Yeah, and that was a pretty good curve. He does. He stands on the first base side of the rubber, so he's kind of oriented over there. His catcher Jazawa almost every pitch is setting that target away. Oh and two. I've never seen that. They usually the lefties are on the other side. The two strike pitch to Hollander. Very much outside. Now the runner breaks for third, the throw, and he's safe. That bag gives way to safe bags. And so if you get there first, even if that bag kicks away, called safe, close play. Uh, you tell, tell me that. Or I can't hear him coming. That's a freight train coming right down there. Whoa, he wow. got him if they want to look at it. I think he did. I thought the call was correct as it was made. They're not well, challenging. And that's the advantage that Major League Baseball and, and this doesn't have. You know, they don't have monitors in their dugout. It doesn't matter. He gets the strikeout swinging and gets out of the jam. So after an entertaining first inning, no score.
Well, Japan, not just a beautiful country, but a baseball crazy country with all of the uh, culture and the history there. And a lot of it is serene and peaceful, but of course, you also have the chaos of the big cities and the chaos of their baseball culture as well. I mean, those games are so spirited, spirited in the Tokyo Professional Leagues. A team from Tokyo, now not the whole country, but a team from Tokyo has never lost consecutive games here in Williamsport, ever. And they've been here a lot of times. I, and I'm sure that the coaches have explained that to these young men. Hey to try to get them to relax a little bit. Joe Adachi, the shortstop, taking ball one. From Josepa, the pitcher still in for Curacao. No score, second inning. One for two with two runs batted in for Adachi. That was the hit against Siniscalchi that prevented Siniscalchi from finishing the game, forced Canada to go to their bullpen. And Japan actually put a little pressure on him at the end of that game. He muscles one out towards short, but you got to hit it at somebody else if you want to get a hit against Curacao because Sanche can go get it. Yeah, he's fun to watch. Tell he enjoys the game. He can, you know, he, but you know the ball he made on the last out of the of, of the first inning, and then that ball there, his first steps really, really incredible. And uh, look, you see a kid throw left-handed and right-handed <laughs> in the same game and do it fluidly from both sides you figure he's got a lot of athleticism but it's not it's not a gimmick I mean he can really play yeah we showed that in the first game the side by side and, and, and you know the you know the wind up was the same the, the you couldn't I mean it looked like you were just looking at the same guy and they just switched it over and, you know but yeah from left and right mechanics are the same hard to do I mean, this is what we're talking about. This was Gerangelo Sayenche yesterday in the same game in the same inning. Glove high, bring it to the chest. Turn, show the back, show the show the front pocket toward the hitter and let it fly. And he's not eligible to pitch tonight, so he'll be the shortstop. He, he was not having as much success. You can see the lack of command. He walked three and hit a batter as a left-handed pitcher, switched around to the right side. Did not give up a run. Walked two, struck out six. So it's kind of a nice security blanket. <laughs> this isn't working. Let's try something else. No kid. Those guys are in the shower. One, two. Did he go? Did he go? That'd be a no. In any language. We all know that call. Sosuke Igawa. He is the starting pitcher. One out and nobody on. Puts that one well to center field. Bianchi with the nice catch. That one might have started to take off on him a little bit, but he hung with it. Two down. It looked like that thing had a little second gear going out there toward Bianchi, but yeah, again, we've seen some fabulous outfield play, kids laying out for Bob. Tell you what I'm impressed with is like I didn't learn how to run toward a wall and then peek at the wall and then try to find the ball again. I didn't learn that until I was in the minor leagues. Tony Gwynn actually helped me with it in rookie ball, but you know, these kids all do it. Fastball inside, 1 0. That is not easy to do. I struggled with it until they moved me to first base. That's why they moved me there. 1 and 1 with a good high fastball from Josepa Rio. In a way, may not be a, a huge give, but he likes those muscles. He's got some strength. Hit that one well to right. Valentina catches it. And Japan goes three up, three down. Hey, look what they're working on down at the concession stand. That for us. Could could be potentially for us. Oh boy. Hang on tight. That could be coming up later. No score from Williamsport. Gosh, it's only game but three of four. We're getting a little goofy already in Williamsport. What a beautiful night at the Little League World Series. Our fresh take is brought to you by Subway. And then Mexico Crucky with Gael Cortez leading the way. Two home runs. They stave off elimination. Rhode Island very impressive in an 8 nothing win. And our last elimination game of the night after us right here on ESPN. It's California, Texas. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one too, that game. But... You know, we thought that I, I thought watching Texas play in the regional finals that, that they were going to score a ton of runs. They only scored one yesterday. And then California, of course, we thought that was 
maybe the strongest team coming in on the U.S. side, and you know they go out, you know they lose their first game. So they, one really good team's going to go home after tonight. And very similar, I think, to the way Japan surprised everybody by losing their opening round game. I think it always feels that way when California loses because of their track record of success. And that's a foul. Good call by Ricky Castle, home plate umpire Fernandez as he's coming out of the box. The ball hit him. So and two. Yeah, the Cal I was surprised California. That I, you know, they didn't swing the bats well. Two pitch from Igawa. On the ground, left side. Quick release. Nice throw from Moria, who is clearly one of Japan's better defensive players. One down. Uh, un unbelievably quick hands. Uh, watch how quickly Moria gets the ball from glove to hand. Watch this. Look at how quick that is. And he gets it in the, you know, the correct seams, throws a he doesn't throw a sinker, he doesn't throw the ball that cuts, he throws a nice straight ball. To first baseman, Aikimoto. Is that how we would say that? Yes, Aikimoto. And when you when you, you don't have to have a you know we've seen some third basemen in this that have just absolute bazookas for arms and you know not a strong throw but a quick accurate throw get it out of your glove quick enough and that's all you need. Angelo Valentina takes a strike. It's one and one. It's a good point. Look, you don't have to have the 80 mile an hour fastball on the infield to succeed if your mechanics and your footwork and that glove work all works together. Nagawa, right off the end of the bat, foul ball. I learned that early from, and I, when I first started playing first base in San Diego from Greg Nettles. First ground ball to him. He threw a little, you know, three-quarter sidearm, and he just throws a little ball that floats over there. And, you know, and I, I was out on my front foot, like I, you know, I was looking for a fastball and got a changeup. And he just said, he said, stay back, young man. It'll get there. <laughs> on the ground, Maria, another clean pick and another great exchange. Two down. He can play. Yeah, he's really really good look at look at the smile on his face too he knows he made a great play look how far he ranges to his left and that's what i like when he got the ball he took a couple steps but watch how he turns that left shoulder right toward his target he didn't throw with an open shoulder where it can sail on you he, he pointed that shoulder right at his target and made another great throw to first base that's fun to watch two down Jadon Josepa, the pitcher yeah, takes it's, the ball. it's hard to convince kids that you catch ground balls with your feet you know, yes, you need the glove, of course, but your footwork, if it's impeccable like his is in those last two plays, you're going to catch most of the balls that are hit to you. On the ground, and Curacao, I think, is thinking, <laughs> hit it somewhere else. What an inning. And then place the ball right on top of the bow. Very politely. What a, what a gentleman. <laughs> those smiles were well earned. What a great inning for him. No score. Oh, uh, look what's here, Crucky. A special delivery courtesy of our friends at Heinz. The tailgate picnic dog. All right, here's what it's topped with. Baked beans, that's number one. Cheddar cheese, Heinz mustard. Let me get out of the way. Which way am I going, Heinz? Jalapeno ketchup, Heinz relish, and crushed potato chips. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Just get that in you. Look at that. That's the tailgate dog. I have to say, a lot of my favorites are in there. Doesn't that look like a tailgate on a bun? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, the problem is we have to talk here for a couple minutes. Well, good luck with you. I don't have to do anything. I'm going to eat. <laughs> Thanks to our friends at Heinz. Dinner time up here in the booth, and a ball hit well to right field. Caught, though. Nice play. And that's uh, Valentina in right field with another catch. One pitch, one out here in the third. If you hear silent, if we have a little silence in this inning, you, you know why. I mean, I, I know a lot of people think I have a big mouth, but I'm going to have to get some. I have to do some stretching exercise to get that baby in there. I, I don't think this is going to be the easiest thing to eat. I will say that. Now look at that thing. It, certainly not going to be one of the cleanest. I wonder if you have to eat it in stages, like eat the chips first. 
and then get to the other stuff. Okay, so just kind of pick some of those off. Let me try one. Yeah. Okay. It's a good start. Oh, and two. See, because I mean, I'm just thinking that's not going to be the easiest thing to eat. Two down. I think it could be a tad messy. Yeah. We're going to give it the old uh, Little League yeah, try, though. The great thing is, is ESPN supplies us with the shirt, so if we ruin them, it's on them. <laughs> Good point, Kruggy. Two down. A nice big uh, applause here for the third baseman, who's the defensive star of the game. A butt trying to butt his way aboard, and another nice play this time by Nazir Fernandez. Say, Maria, you can do it on your side. I can do it on our side. Time to get down with our tailgate dog. Okay, let's see. No score. Well, what a beautiful place Curacao is. Just north of South America in the South Caribbean. All the colors that you would expect in a uh, Caribbean island with the surf, with the scuba diving, the snorkeling, and a ton of great baseball has come from that uh, very small country, Curacao, back in the Little League World Series. And uh, we love seeing those countries participate in this great game. The Little League Grow the Game grant program was created to provide local Little Leagues all across the world the resources they need for general improvement to expand or establish a Little League Softball, Little League Challenger Division, Little League Urban Initiative programs. For more information, visit littleleague.org slash grow the game. Another bunt. And a quick exchange for the catcher with the stretch from Sato at second base, one away. Looks like that ball missed him. Well, he was way out in the grass running to first base, but Jazawa right there, great play. It's amazing how quick, even with a catcher's glove, he got the ball from glove to hand. Inche going to bunt and he offered at it. So we're seeing some little ball here on the international side. Durangelo Sayinche. Yeah, every leadoff hitter so far, the first three innings for Curacao has tried to try to lay down a bunt. He's trying to bunt again. He bunted that one foul. It's 0-2. Well, that's an interesting strategy. <laughs> Yeah, and it looks like it's so un, you know, fundamentally unsound, but I've seen Ozzie Guillen do that. Top hand just because it deadens the ball so much with only one hand. And I think that's what he's trying to do, deaden it. 0-2. Oh, Josawa sets up outside, and Igawa, the pitcher, misses away. No score here, although we do have a score in the broadcast booth. Hot dog one, Crucky nothing. With me. <laughs> That one on the ground to first right there. Ikimodo, two down. Yeah, that was a winner. The hot dog is delicious, but it won. Stuff all over me. I think there have been some losing battles against the concession stands out there as well. As part of Williamsport. I, I, I'm very happy with the fact that this is our third day here. At and I haven't had any uh, what is it, the funnel cake or really yeah no sweets the fried Oreos oh now see no one told me that oh those are available Kareem Ayubi pinch hitting here yeah, in our, the third our family reunion we're big on deep frying everything we can get our hands on sponge anything it's like your own personal state fair oh, man Oreo Snickers Peanut butter cups, turkey, whatever. Throw it all in there. 0-2. Oh, One and two. Well, so far, a very crisp, well-played game. Lots of good defense on both sides. And then, you know, both teams first inning, some, you know, little, little, little edginess there with the Japan getting their first two runners on and Curacao getting their second two hitters on, but. No runs given up, and looks like things have settled down to both pitchers really locating well and changing speeds well. 
an elimination game. And he struck him out swinging. So through three, no score. Japan and Curacao again, though. I'm not sure what the score is. Crucky against that hot dog. Look at that. Uh, yeah, you lose. Gosh. Sorry, pal. Yeah. This is Little League World Series with a brand new sound. We love the Duke Ellington School Choir. Welcome back to the Little League World Series presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Picture perfect night in Williamsport. And we got some drama. This is an elimination game. And two teams considered favorites coming in, both with their backs against the wall. Scoreless halfway through. We go to the fourth inning. And Japan against Curacao. Jaden Josepa, the pitcher. That one got away from him. Ball one. We got the three, four, five hitters coming up now, seeing Josepa for the second time. Ryota Endo. He struck out his first time up. On the ground to third. Fernandez, one away. Man, the third base play on both sides has been excellent. It's been spectacular. And that, that is fun to watch because you know, you're looking at two pitchers you know, that, that they aren't what we've seen as far as overpowering. So third base play is, is at a premium in this, in, the, in this game for both teams. And both guys have been flawless. Fernandez, I mean, he, I just love the way he looks before a pitch. He gets in the ready position over there at third. He's hugging the line, trying to prevent an extra base hit. Let's see if we can watch him before this next pitch. He doesn't, he doesn't wait to get down and ready. Just locked in. That one is pulled hard and foul. Look out. Maybe if you're sitting down there, you weren't thinking he'd get a foul ball. I not want to hit that hard. That ball was tagged, but yeah, you see Fernandez at third base. He has that right foot back. And I think that's just to get a running start if, if they decide to bunt so he can get a good jump coming in. That's pretty smart. You got a guy throw one in, maybe in off the plate, and he snap hooks it foul. And so go away. See if he can hit that one and swung right through it. Suzuki swings and misses strike three two down really smart pitching right here by Josepa like I said the first pitch fastball gets turned around so you know he's looking to try to spin on one but what do you do go away and once he got the two strikes he went away and elevated well, pinch hitter here so Hirao. Left-handed hitter, 12 years old. That's not a bad emoji. What was it? Exclamation point, question mark. And he hits that one. How's that for a pinch hit? Not a lot of question about it. It's gone, and that is the first run of the game. Much more exclamation wow. than question. Yeah, Man, there's no question that was a long one, that's for sure. The okay, first yeah. run for Japan. That's what you love. I mean, he, he was halfway to second base when he saw that ball go over the fence. And look at the eyes right on it, the head down. Nice little follow through, but look at him. He's watching it the whole way. He knows he hit it good. Watch when he gets up around second base. Great, great effort here by the right fielder, Valentina. And look at the reaction of Osepa. Look at that. That's what it's all about. Pinch hitter, first yeah. pitch. And the first run of this elimination game. Well, we're going to get a mound visit. And we don't know uh, whether this is uh, to make a pitching change or just trying to settle Josepa down. It looks like it's the latter. Yeah, he saw the emotions. And the last thing you want to do is, OK, look, we got two outs. You gave up a home run. You know, it's one run. We have to score one to win anyway. So keep them there. You know, get your focus back. Don't be upset. You're pitching great. You know, get this guy out. Get us in the bullpen. 
or get us back in the dugout so we can go after him, try to score some runs. Up the middle, Joe Adachi, first pitch swinging base hit. I think Japan, when they have been a little more aggressive at the plate, they've had more success. Yeah, without question. And that, you know, he's throwing strikes. Uh, Josepa's, you know, he's, he's not walking guys. He's, he's around the strike zone. So, yeah. And, and, you know, we all understand this when you're watching up Little League that the strike zone is a little wider. So why give him an opportunity to throw a ball out there if he's going to throw the first one over the plate? Takumi Ito will pinch hit. Last time they used a pinch hitter, it was pretty successful. Pulls that bat back and takes the breaking ball for a strike. Now here's where Josepa got a little smart too. Okay, they're hitting my first pitch fastball. Let me just spin up a curveball right here. Another curve. Ito ducked out of the way. Wasn't that far from being a strike. <laughs> Runner at first, two down. Two and one. This next one will be pitch number 50 from Jaden Josepa. Trying to keep Adachi close, and so now Antonio wants time to go out to talk to his pitcher. Look at the size of that man, Antonio, the catcher. Look at him. Yeah, I, I, when they give these kids these uniforms, they're all, you know, they wear baggy uniform. They have no choice with him. I mean, baggy for everyone else, but it's skin tight on him because he's he is a very muscular young man. Foul ball up over the rooftop. Full count three and two. And I love his demeanor behind all, but he's very active, energetic. He's got a strong arm, but a calm, nice demeanor for his pitchers. He, he plays like the captain out yes. there for Curacao. Another foul ball. Everybody okay? See some smiles, so I'm thinking it is. I think mom got the ball. Now time to take pictures and send it to our friends. Another 3-2. Struck him out with the curve. So that's out number three. But Japan strikes first here in Williamsport in this elimination game. Saul Hirao, the pinch hitter, goes deep to right center. It's 1-0 Japan. You know what those highlights do a pretty good job of telling the story our Honda game summary. We've had so many highlights defense on both sides. The pinch hit home run by Sol Hirao the only run of the game it's one nothing Japan. Yeah first pitch right off the bench and he hits a home run and uh, we thought this was the way this game was going to play out a lot more fundamentally sound balls getting put in play by both teams. Great defense by both teams so far and one run that's it through four and Going into the bottom of the fourth inning. Big crowd, beautiful night. Championship hopes on the line in an elimination game. Two good teams and a 1 0 score. Bottom of the fourth, Curacao with their three, four, five hitters, including big, strong Donovan Antonia, the catcher. He takes that breaking ball from Agawa for ball one. You remember his first at bat, he got jammed a little bit, hit that grounder to short, the hopper. And Adachi backed up on it and he was safe, but oh. he hits one way up there. Has he tied the game? He has. That's a big fly. One to one. 
You can kind of see that coming. Yeah, second time through. Wow. I don't blame him. I, you know what? Yeah, you know, you hear some announcers, people describe it as light tower power. We got to come up with something else. That went over the light standard there in left center field. I think it was. It was it, higher. It was over the lights when it went over the fence. Wow. It was higher than the top of the lights. Now that's just big, big time power from a strong kid to tie the game. And if you're the coach, you just you got to say, you know, hey, good job. Who, who knew you can give up one that far? I mean, that was a long one. Wow. So a home run for Japan in the top of the fourth, and a home run ties it. Still nobody out for Curacao. The second baseman, Marlin, kind of pops one up. Can Ikamoto get there? He can. Out number one. We're still kind of. That's it. But, you know, the sound off the bat, and we saw two real long home runs in this first game. And, you know, the first game we did from from, from, the, from Mexico, one hit the scoreboard, one looked like it went around the scoreboard and hit that trailer down there, but that was majestic. Yeah, that one may not have traveled quite as far distance wise, point from home plate. But there hasn't been a more impressive home run in this Little League World Series than that one. He, he just, it's impossible to hit it that high and still have it go out unless you got some big time strength. This is Michael Vilchez pinch hitting. Higawa throws and bounces that one. We sit in a broadcast booth with a great view of the game, but there is a little overhang above us, and he made contact with that ball, and it just disappeared. It was so high. Yeah, I had to lean forward to see where that one was going to end up. That was. <laughs> I think the whole ballpark's still buzzing about it. <laughs> they have to be. On the ground is short. Adachi, two down. Well, big time stakes on both sides and every kid knows it. the winner plays the loser of Australia Panama and that game takes place tomorrow then the that game between the winner here and Australia Panama loser is Monday 6 Eastern on ESPN the loser is eliminated from Little League World Series title contention they will play a consolation game on Tuesday. Two down, base is empty. Nazir Fernandez kicks that back foot out of the way. Ball one. So the, the title hopes on both sides, and two teams that came here thinking they had a shot at a championship. And tie game getting late in this game, where one swing of the bat could decide it. Now this is probably the most well played game we've I've seen. So far in this Little League World Series, you know, two solo home runs, one-one game, pitching, defense, this has been everything you could ask for. Trying to launch one, Fernandez one and two, and I love these. Okay, it's Saturday. We got a big crowd here on hand, and lots of folks watching the U.S. game. But we're in between U.S. games, so they come down here to volunteer, pack this ballpark. And it creates a little extra excitement. One, two. And I think a lot of people that that come here that know the history of the Little League World Series and they thought, wait, Japan lost their first game? And I think a lot of people want to see, you know, what's going on here. Can they lose two in a row and get eliminated? Would be a shocker. Struck him out with the curve. So after the home run, three retired in a row. But before that, how about this one, Crucky? Donovan Antonio, look at that one. I mean, it left the bat straight up in the air. We thought, oh, oh, over the light standard to tie this one up. We're going to the fifth.
Dave Fleming, John Kruk, Marisol Castro from Volunteer Stadium in Williamsport. It's the Little League World Series on this beautiful late summer Saturday afternoon. Now turning into evening. The lights are on. The big crowd is on hand. And we got huge stakes elimination game. Curacao and Japan. Seya Takahashi is the pinch hitter for Japan against Josepa, who is still in the game as the pitcher for Curacao. Home runs on both sides in the fourth inning to tie it at one. Now one and one to Takahashi. Got the call. It's one and two. This is a Chofu Little League team from Tokyo that in the ultra competitive Japanese regional tournament was really impressive. And they've come to Williamsport and nothing's been easy for them. So these are the elimination games teams that lost their first round matchups. Tomorrow we get the winners from days one and two. Panama, Australia on the international side at 11 Eastern right here on ESPN. Then 5 Eastern. Canada with the shocker against Japan against a big strong team from South Korea that's tomorrow Sunday 5 Eastern ahead of Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN South Korea by average height weight size is the biggest team of all 16 in Williamsport Genki Matsura was a little kid with a lot of spunk and spirit he is one of the vocal leaders for Japan Matsura hits here in the fifth Tell you what you like though, Dave, is how you know both pitchers gave up solo home runs, and both pitchers have settled in and and hasn't haven't let anything else get on the board. It tells you a lot. Two and zero. Oh. That's called strike one. Yeah, because sometimes uh, you make one mistake in a game where the stakes are as high as they are in this one, and a 12-year-old kid he can get rattled. Two and two. Foul tip into the mitt of Antonia. Two down. It's strikeout number seven for Jaden Josepa. And he gets some hugs. You strike somebody out, you get <laughs> hugged. Hey, why not? Yeah, they know what they're playing for. Uh, very similar on both sides, I think. Yeah, very similar. Igawa a little more conservative with his pitches, but. Josepa is, uh, he looks like he's dialed in right now. And both kids using a lot of the off speed stuff, not overpowering with the fastball and getting swings like that. Josawa, who's a good, accomplished hitter, one for two in this game, he chased one in the dirt. Yeah, and it's two breaking balls in a row, and you see if Josepa right now comes back with a fastball up or away to let him see something. It was a fastball away. And, uh, Josawa got a good swing, fouled it off. We got this one. Yeah, look what I found. New baseball. Oh two. Just missed. <laughs> See Antonio put his head down like, come on, man, we needed that one. And he hit the target. Now the target was yeah. not on the plate. I mean, this is a guy who could change the score with one swing. Two and two. Josawa was bailing out. It wasn't that far away no. from being strike three. No, it wasn't. That, I mean, that, you know, we could, that could have gone either way. And another close one. I mean, Curacao, you're hanging on those pitches because you know this is a kid at the plate who can hit it over the wall. Nothing over the center of the plate just yet, but three, two, you know, two outs. You don't want to walk anyone, but you don't want to just throw something over the middle of the plate either. That one got a piece of Donovan Antonia. And I think he's all right. <laughs> yeah. Anything's getting hurt on a foul tip that hits him, it's the ball. Yeah, glancing blow off the top of the Three, two. catcher's mask. Hockey helmet, whatever you want to call it. Another 3 2. 
Lined but caught at second by Marlin. So Tokyo Japan goes down in order. We got a tie game mid five in an elimination game in Williamsport. It's that one on the end of the bat. Oh, what a play by Guevara. Fly ball and a diving catch in left. Gabriel Persici. Shortstop got it. Oh, what a play by Miles Risley. This one to right field. Towards the line and a nice running catch. James Fellows. This is trouble. Oh, what a catch. How did Britton Moore get there? One of my favorite parts of the Little League World Series. Web gems are not just for big leaguers. No, and you know we've seen some that have changed games. Uh, that line drive we saw the shortstop Risley catch was with the bases loaded early in the game, and that game could have get blown open early if that ball gets through. But great play to end that inning. Ooh, that was you'd love it too. I mean, these you know they watch, they watch the big leaguers. They they have flair when they come here. And when they make a web gem, the exuberance they show is just unbelievable. Christopher Marshall, the pinch hitter. Sosuke Igawa, the starter for Japan, still in there. 12 years old, 5-4 at the plate. Let's see if he's thinking about a bunt, and he bunts at that one foul. One and one. Now you had you had the Curacao, their first game, right, for Curacao, right? Did yeah. they try to bunt every First they they the did enemy. not. They did not. And you, you do wonder whether they watched that game, Japan and Canada, and figured, hey, Canada got base runners, and as soon as they did, they were running wild. And Japan didn't handle it very well. And maybe that's altered the strategy. I don't know. One and two. A little late with that swing after he showed the bunt and pulled the bat back. Home runs on both sides, the only runs. Oh. And for Curacao, that's still their only hit. Yeah, that, you know, you look at, you can understand how Antonia hits home runs, but the, the size differential between the two guys that hit home runs, astronomical. Oh. Three and two. Well, a walk would be a big play. So you know that Sosuke Igawa does not want to do that. You're a little frustrated. Walk would mean the go ahead run in the bottom of the fifth of this six inning game. Marshall, one hop to short, and a good play by Joe Adachi. One out. And a good job by Igawa to make sure he threw a strike. Yes, and, and a quality pitch with, with uh, on a 3 2 count. But you see Adachi, you. remember the first inning when he backed up on a ball? And, and, he, and he made an error, and now he's. He's attacking ground balls now, which is exactly what you need to do. Well, that is one tough kid, too, Joe Adachi. He was involved in the collision in the opening game with his left fielder, had a bloody nose, blood was everywhere. He, he never left the game. Right. Egory Manuela is going to come up as the pinch hitter. And uh, the uh, manager for Japan wanted a little clarification. I, I don't know. We're not allowed to listen into those conversations. Koji Yamashita came out to talk to one of the umpires. Now a curve and Manuela gets out of the way. Ball one. I, you can see a little different body language from Sosuke Agawa on the mound. Well, he fired down that rosin bag and made a good pitch, so. <laughs> Maybe he's. Uh, could be getting a little tired. He could be, could be understanding that this is the fifth inning and I cannot give up another run. Yeah, if he does, then uh, Tokyo Japan would be down to their final three outs in an elimination game. Igor Manuela, who had a hit against South Korea, might have chased there one and two. And I think, you know, the way this game is going to play out, if Kurosawa doesn't score right here. Japan's going to come up with their two, three, four hitters. If there's a one, two, three inning in this inning, the Curacao is going to come up in the bottom of six with the top of their order hitting. So you're right where you want to be. Off the glove and 
A nice stab at it by Sato, but no time to make the play. Manuel has got another hit. He's two for two in Williamsport. And you saw the speed going up the first baseline. Let's see now if Curacao tries to force the action. You got to love it, though. Like, you know, look, tough play right there for Igawa. The second baseman Sato, had, once, he went, once he had to go down on the ground to get that ball, you knew that Manuela was going to be safe with his speed. Thank you, Osepa. A pinch hitter now. Josefa, another left handed hitter. And we will watch Manuela over there at first. It's tough to execute a straight steal in Little League, but foul ball. He's bunts us. That's not a sacrifice attempt. He's trying to get the perfect bunt down. Yeah, he's trying to get the bunt down, and if they, they do throw him out, you get two outs and a runner on second, and you turn it over to the top of their order. The inches hit the, you know, his first at bat, he hit a hard ground ball to second. His second at bat, he kind of rolled over a little bit of grounder to first, but the ball's being put in play. Oh. Yeah, he, the, the hitter up next is probably the best overall hitter for Curacao, so they would love to have a runner in scoring position for Sainche. One and one to count, one to one the score. Elimination night. Another butt attempt, another foul ball. Now it's one and two. So Josefa, a couple words of encouragement from his first base coach back to the plate. Mom's into it. She is really into it. And there's uh, Gerangelo who is waiting to hit next. One, two. A line drive base hit. Beautiful swing. And this is the spot that Curacao wants. And he is pumped up. So is Mom. Yeah. Fouled off two bun attempts. And. It looked like he got the little slow breaking ball right there, but look how he stayed on that. That is just picture perfect. No stride whatsoever. Two strike swing. Just put it in play. Make good things happen. And now Curacao, you would have to think advantage of that. First and second, top of the order up with only one out in a tie game in the bottom of the fifth inning. And my goodness, this excitement is getting to me. That looked like a John Crux swing to me. <laughs> that was beautiful. And mom's thinking, why, why were we bunting yeah, in the first man. place? Look what my kid can do. Let my kid swing the bat. So here we go. I mean, this is Gerangelo Sainche, the switch pitcher. Sticking to batting straight left-handed in this game for whatever reason, even though he told us he can't switch it. Two on, one out. Tie game in the last of the fifth. And he got hit, which... Look, it's good and bad for Curacao. It loads the bases. It puts that go-ahead run at third, ratchets up the pressure on Japan, but it takes the bat out of the hands of the guy that they love watching swing. Yeah, but it does put the runner in square, you know, the, 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 the go-ahead run on third base with less than two outs, too. So I think Curacao is going to be, they'll be, and they're happy to take it. I think they will. So now the manager, Yamashita. ボール。あ、じゃあ、ここ入っちゃった。だ、でも、自信持ってきよう。今までだってお前2回しか投げれなかったピッチャー5回まで来てんだよ。もう1回楽しめお前。もう1回やってた。いいか。はい。うまくい
And that could be one of the heavy favorites, Japan. 2 0. Oh. Now the base is loaded also. And <laughs> look at the catcher, Josawa. Calm down. A walk forces in the go ahead run. And this is where Hamanika has to be really locked in on the pitch right here. You don't want to chase a bad pitch to get him back, to get Agawa back in the count. 3 0. Well, here we go. I mean, Sosuke Agawa, there's nowhere to put him. You got to throw a strike, and he knows it. And I got a feeling. He, you know, just looking at the third base coach for Curacao, he gave him the two sign, like, you're taking two right here. If he throws a strike 3 0, you're taking 3 1, too. So let's see. The 3 0 pitch is ball four, and that forces in the go ahead run. And it was close, but a little bit high. Two to one, Curacao. And I think that's probably it for Igawa. And you feel for Sosuke Igawa, who did pitch well. Yeah, you saw the frustration, though, the last inning. And it looked like, you know, he might have been running out of gas a little bit here in this one. I don't uh, a lot to be proud of for Sosuke Agawa. But while they make the pitching change, we're going to step aside. The bases loaded. Curacao leads when we come back. Welcome back to the Little League World Series presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. High up above Williamsport, where down below we've got a big story happening. The kids from Japan. The only time Japan has sent a team to Williamsport and lost its first two games all the way back in 1962. That was Japan's first appearance in the Little League World Series. They have been the dominant power. Now it's different kids, a different team, but they have won four of the last six overall championships, and this is an elimination game. Their tournament is on the line. And welcome to the game, Takumi Ito who is the new pitcher, the second pitcher of the night for Japan. He inherits a bases loaded situation and the big powerful Donovan Antonio coming up for Curacao. Yeah, I don't envy Ito in this situation, but you know, again, it's, it, you know, he has to keep them right here because you got the order coming up for Japan, two, three, four hitters, but that's the home run he hit in the fourth inning that went over the light pole in left center field. So the infield has to come in. You don't envy no. those kids either. No. With speed on the bases, too. Bases loaded, one out. And a first pitch breaking ball. Antonio watches one. Four strike one. This is a chance for Curacao. They've already taken the lead. They are three outs away from a win and eliminating Japan. A chance to open this game up. Takumi Ito. The ball popped up, and I mean up. Ryota Endo is under it. He'll make the catch. Tagging at third. Here comes Osefa. The tag. He is out at home plate. What a throw by Endo. And maybe that's the play that keeps the title hopes alive for Japan. What a throw by Ryota Endo to home plate. And how about Jazawa going up for the throw? Look at this throw. All the way in the air. We're not going to bounce it, but look at the catcher. Jump, catch, tag, no chance for the runner to score. So Curacao with a lead to the six we go. Little League World Series is presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes Cereal. They're great! Wow, what a night in Williamsport and what a game we have had on the international side as we go to the sixth inning elimination game in the international bracket. Japan and Curacao, So Hirao hit a solo home run to put Japan ahead of the fourth. Donovan Antonio, a home run to tie it and then a run in the bottom of the fifth. Jaden Josepa has pitched well for Curacao. They are three outs away from eliminating Japan, but here comes Japan. A first pitch leadoff single in the sixth by Yujiro Moria, and that is the tying run with nobody out. Yeah, we said it, you know, the, the great pitching to get out of that inning with only the one run score. Kurosawa, though, does take the lead two to one, but two, three, four coming up for Japan. 
great start right there with the leadoff base hit. A little coaching change in the first base coaching box. They, they went, signs coach, we're going to put a player out there. Yeah. And now we're going to get a visit on the mound. So there is your first base coach. Shoto Sato is in uh, the first base coach's box. And are we getting a pitching change? It looks like we are. So Curacao is going to make a change here in the sixth inning. And that means we're going to step aside. The tying run aboard. Nobody out. Title hopes on the line. We'll be back right after this. All of the excitement of the Little League World Series, and we have had a ton of it tonight, including scores, stats, highlights, and more can be found at LLBWS.org. You can also follow us along on social media using the hashtag LLWS. Well, those fans from Tokyo, Japan know that their championship hopes are on the line. Hedon Marlin, the new pitcher, and a throw from Antonio to first base with Moria. At the bag, he is the tying run. Japan is down to their final three outs. Marlon, 12 years old, a right-hander, and he works fast. Swinging, strike one. It's one and one. The hitter is Ryota Endo, and in a lot of ways, their title hopes are still alive because of the throw he made from right field. Tremendous to cut down what would have been a third run for Curacao in the bottom of the fifth. He almost got hit. It is two and one. Yeah, Marlin works fast and he sees a little short short armor of the ball. He doesn't get out and extended. He you know, doesn't throw over top. He kind of throws from a little bit above his shoulder. It's going to be a little bit high. Three and one. Sometimes guys like that, you, you, yeah, the hitter might have a tough time to pick it up, but a lot of times guys throw like that, their command isn't as good. Well, the Warriors had a lot of late game magic this year the last few years. Maybe Team Japan can here. Three one strike two swinging. But there is some velocity on it. Yep. He must have curfew or something as quick as he's pitching. He likes to go. Curacao three outs away from a win and now two outs away. Came back he was behind of the count three oh and he got him. Yeah, and that's you, you talk about the velocity on his fastball. You know, it's short, it's quick, but it is explosive. And when he commands it, it's got to be tough to pick up and hit. Well, Tatsuya Suzuki, who has struck out twice in this game, right handed hitter, he does have power, and he took a healthy rip for strike one. Yeah, what I noticed about Suzuki, you know, pitches middle end, you know, he'll turn on balls, but he, he has struggled today with the pitch away from him. You know, reaching for it, you know, kind of pulling off a little bit, but reaching for that outside pitch. Let's see if Marlon can stay away. Up and in. I think I might can that curveball for now for yeah for Marlon. That fastball's popping. Looks like it has a little late life on it. You, the last thing you want to do is try to roll in a breaking ball and hang one. That one is hit well to left and caught. What a catch by Hamanika. Two down now a tag play and heads up base running by Moria to get into scoring position. But my goodness, Nair Hamanika just made maybe the catch of this tournament. Yeah, that ball was hit on a line and you didn't think there for a second that he saw it off the bat. But once he once he saw it, you look right there, last second, the little jump, the extension, Hamanika makes the play. But it was funny because the runner for Japan was about halfway to second base. He ran back and touched first. Wasn't going to tag, but when he saw Hamanika not, you know, not having his balance under him, he took off for second. But the shortstop, Seincha, he's out there screaming at him, like, "What are you doing? To get the ball in here!" Wow. I mean, it wasn't a diving catch, but considering the stakes, what a play! Japan is one out from being eliminated and losing their first two games in Williamsport for the first time. Since 1962. Strike one to So Hirao, who came up as a pinch hitter in the fourth, and he hit a home run. So now he hits for a second time. The 0 1 for Marlin. One and one. Close, but a ball. And the fans from Curacao know they are so close, and the kids from Japan know it as well. Yeah, they, they know what, they know the deal. 
That one is foul. And now Japan is down to their final strike. Wow. A team, a country that has won four of the last six Little League World Series titles. Either way, win or lose, this has been as good a play game as we've seen in this Little League World Series so far. Curacao, a very proud baseball country themselves. Maria, who is ready to take off from second. He's the tying run with two down. Now Hiral wants time. Most nervous people in the ballpark. Parents. Two and two. Hiral, look at Hiral hold his chest. Take a deep breath. On the ground, Marlin to first. Curacao has done it. What a win! And just a shocker, Curacao will celebrate. You know, the kids from Japan just cannot believe what happened. They have been eliminated here in Williamsport. A tremendous game on both sides. And excitement for Curacao, total heartbreak for the kids from Tokyo. 11 and 1 all time in their second game in Williamsport, and they earned this one. Oh, they surely did. Great pitching from the start of the game. You know, the pinch hit home run, the only run that Japan was able to put on the board. Great defense. And just a complete game by this team from Curacao that faced tough pitching themselves. Yeah, it's hard to watch. Not just because they are so proud and the expectations are so high and the pressure is so high for Japan, but though that is such a spirited, nice group of kids, and that you know they are stunned. Well, I'm sure they're stunned, and, and it's great to see their fans. You know, the parents, the relatives that came here from Japan to watch this and two and done and their fans are up clapping, standing up, clapping for their for their kids and relatives. You know, it's a great sign of respect for how far these kids had to come to get here. And even though it's two and done, they still have to be very proud to make it for their team to make it here. I mean, those kids from Curacao should be very, very proud because Japan played hard and they played well. And they tip their caps to the to the fans from Tokyo as well. A two to one hard fought win to eliminate Japan. There is nobody, and I mean nobody, who thought two games and done. Now, I know. The powerhouse when, in Williams. When we were having our meetings, we were talking about it. You know, we just, okay, Japan's playing Canada. You know, Japan's going to move on. They're going to, they'll probably be in the finals, uh, you know, for this, this whole thing. And, and it just shows you, you know, the great thing about Little League, and same as Big League, anything can happen on any given day. For 11 and 12 and 13 year olds, and this is shocking that Japan is out. But you know, give Curacao credit; they outplayed them in this one. So Japan joins Italy and Bend, Oregon, as teams that have been eliminated from title contention. Mexico and Curacao on the international side have kept their title hopes alive with wins today. On the U.S. side, Rhode Island has done the same. Texas and California; those two teams still have to play tonight to try to stay alive for championship contention. The winners from the opening round games will all be in action again tomorrow with a big leg up. We're step aside and when we come back a little more summary from Williamsport. What a win for Curacao. Japan eliminated two to one. We'll be back. What a story here tonight in Williamsport. Dave Fleming, John Cruck back with you. Curacao eliminates Japan on this first Saturday of the Little League World Series. Two to one, the final score, and those kids have a lot to be proud of. I mean, look, John, the, the, the big picture of this game, because of the success they have had, is Japan being eliminated. It had not happened in two games since 1962. That's the last time Japan had lost their first two games here in Williamsport, so a very rare encourage indeed. But Curacao earned it. I mean, Japan 
and, and you see the tears and the long faces, I, you know how much this hurts them. The, that is a different team from what we've seen here the last few years, but it's still a very good team at Curacao to play a heck of a game. Yeah, yesterday they, they you know, when they lost to Canada, they didn't play well fundamentally. Uh, you know, they got dominated pitching-wise, but this game they played flawless defensively. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where they just couldn't get the big hit when they needed it. And Jaden Josepa was a tremendous starting pitcher for Curacao. Without a blazing fastball, he mixed and matched his way to success. Yeah, he, did, he, he really mixed up his pitch as well, you know, throwing the fastball to get strikeouts when he needed it, but, you know, breaking balls. And then you thought when, you know, when Japan hit the pinch hit home run in the, in the fourth inning, you thought, you know, you know, how does Curacao come up with an answer? That's the answer right there. That big man just hit one deep. And then, you know, the, the one thing you can't do, as good as the def defense was for Japan in this game, you can't defend walks. And a hit batter and a walk to walk in, the, the go ahead and run two to one. And then when a team need to make a play, the play was made there out in left field. That ball gets past him. It's at least second and third, maybe even scores a run to tie the game. But he makes the play. And then the man that hit the home run, makes the final out and Curacao celebrates and you see Japan just can't believe it. I think they're in shock right now that they're going home. Yeah, the excitement and then uh, the other side of things for Japan. And I tell you what, Krucky, we saw that play in the sixth inning. Tremendous defense in left field. Defense was a theme on both sides all night long. You can even go back to the very first inning. Japan got two base runners with nobody out. Two outs, then a little bloop, and Gerangelo Seinche, the shortstop of Curacao. It's kind of a play that gets lost in all the excitement we saw from that point on. Uh, I thought off the bat, no chance to make a catch. He sprints back and catches it and it saves a couple runs, and ultimately that was the difference. Well, how many Little League games you've seen that end 2-1? to one? And so in the first inning, when a play happens, you think, yeah, you know, you know, great play, saved a run, but, you know, the game's going to move forward. But that was possibly... Even in the first inning, a game-saving play by the shortstop. Yeah, I thought it was. So Curacao gets the win. Let's go downstairs to Marisol Castro. Marisol? Hey, good evening. I'm here with the first baseman of the winning team, Alan Amin Allender. What did you do differently this game that got you this win? We were more like a team, and every time someone did something good, we congratulated them. Were you at all more nervous for this game, or did you feel like the team was more relaxed, and what did you do? We were more relaxed than yesterday because we had no pressure today. But although if we lost today, we were out, we were more chill today. You were definitely more chill. So now what will you do to make sure that you go to the finals? I was standing with your families and they were all saying, we're going to the finals. What will you do as a team? The same thing. Same thing. What kind of practice will you do? Every day the same thing. Every day the same thing. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, all right, go get an ice cream or do whatever it is that Little Leaguers do after they win. <laughs> Dave, back up to you. All right, thanks. <laughs> Chill. Maybe Chill. that's the answer. <laughs> yeah, we've heard some good answers. You know, game win and hit. We're going to party, and now they're going to chill. <laughs> I like it. Well, what a win for Curacao. Japan is eliminated. That'll do it for us here from Volunteer Stadium. What a night on the international side. What a win for Curacao. And now let's send it up the hill to Jay Crawford. All right, Dave Fleming, thank you very much. It really drives home that there is no safety net on this first Saturday here from South Williamsport. Elimination day can be very brutal and very tough, and the end can come swiftly. And in the case of Japan, the international super, superpower, they now are eliminated from title contention. Again, this is a team that won the championship here last year. In fact, four of the last six years, the championship trophy has been hoisted by the team from Japan. And beware, Texas and California, because you are on the clock next. Both powers from the U.S. lost their opening round game. So no room for air for California or for Texas. They're our final elimination game on this first Saturday of the Little League World Series. That's next. And for a preview, let's go inside Lamadee Stadium with Carl Ravitch. Carl? Jay, thank you very much. In a year in which it feels like anything is possible at the Little League World Series, we look forward to bringing you Chula Vista, California, and San Antonio, Texas in just a little while over at Lamadee Stadium. 
You have the idea that Japan loses and they're eliminated from title contention. Would be a huge surprise if one of these two teams were. And that's the fate that one of them will have after this evening. Rare that California comes to the World Series and loses two in a row. Rare for Texas. They are the most winning states when it comes to victories in Williamsport of any. Pennsylvania 10 behind Texas. So it doesn't make much sense, but that's the way it is this season. And the good news for both, they feel really comfortable with the pitchers they have on the mound tonight. Dallas Braden is here, Kyle Peterson as well. I guess we start with uh, Texas. We saw Dominic Tellis. He was really good last night offensively. Now he's going to have to get the job done against the team that believes they're ready to break out in California. Yeah, quick turnaround. And for the team from Texas, Dominic Tellis is a kid that they want out there. I think the biggest thing tonight is, you know, it was the defense that really let him down. In the yeah, it was. Is can we get the defense back to the point that it's been during the course of this year. Dominic Tellis offensively one of their top players, but tonight he's going to have to shut down a, a, a California offense that you know is going to be ready to go. They were great for most of the regional. Scuffled in the final game there and just one run here in the opener, so they'll be ready. Eight errors last night. One of those games they just want to flush away and forget about. For California they took a little chance last night, Dallas, and they went with their number two guy if you will, Victor Lizarraga, their number one starter. His numbers are just ridiculous, so they feel more comfortable than any team. Maybe be playing baseball any level with the pitcher on the mound tonight. And you talked about the numbers, Ravi. Let's just take a peek. In the regionals, in the western regionals, 12 innings, zero, that's zero earned runs, only three runs total, but the K to walk ratio 24 to 3. And that last outing, that was a one-hit shutout by Victor Lizarraga. Definitely the man of the hour, the man on the bump for California. This is usually a game reserved for maybe United States championship. Instead, it's an elimination game from title contention. There are the kids from Texas. They wear the bright orange. What's at stake? The winning team stays alive, and they'll play the loser of Tennessee New York. Both those teams were winners. That's Monday at 8. Losing team is done when it comes to title contention. And they'll play a consolation game against Japan. Can you imagine California, Japan, in a consolation game? Would have been very hard to imagine from the start of this tournament, but Japan 0-2 for just the second time ever. And the first time in 54 years, they are eliminated from title contention in their first two games. High drama in the final elimination game of this Saturday. We'll get you set with the first pitch right after this. It's a beautiful evening, the first Saturday night of the 2016 Little League World Series Elimination Day, so nerves are on high alert. And you can just ask the teams that lost today, now 0-2 and eliminated from title contention. Just a beautiful evening here from South Williamsport. The baseball has been tremendous. Three games now on Elimination Saturday are in the books. The big one between California and Texas will happen in about 10 to 15 minutes from right now. Both of these teams on razor's edge, the loser of this one also eliminated from title contention. And as Carl said, could you imagine an elimination game between Japan and California? We'll recap how we got to this point in the day. First elimination game of the day on the international side, Mexico taking on Italy. We get there top of the third, one nothing. Please pay close attention to the swing in the form of Gael Cortez. Look at this swing. He homered early to make it two nothing and then Alejandro Mar with the base hit gives Mexico a three nothing lead. Mar ends up at third with a triple. And then in the sixth, it's that man again. Oh my, Cortez with an absolutely picture-perfect swing and Mexico rolls in their elimination game. They win 12-7, the final score. Oregon, Rhode Island, the first U.S. elimination game of the day. Bottom one, bases loaded. Kenny Ricks pops it up to right. Evan Ullman with the catch and then look at the throw to nail the runner at the plate. A terrific double play. I think the smile says it all. They would respond to bottom second bases loaded. Dominic Brazo, who's been a hitting hero for Rhode Island. Five for five here at Williamsport. Gives Rhode Island a one nothing lead. And then bottom four, up two nothing. Colin Lemieux with the seeing eye bloop to center. Rhode Island pushes another one home. It's three nothing. Next up, Kenny Ricks. Yeah, 
He got it. Deep to left center and gone. That was the big blast, a three-run shot. So Rhode Island wins 8-0 as they push past Oregon to play another day. Oregon now eliminated from title contention. So here are the standings now. All of the teams at the top all won their first game. They'll all be in action here tomorrow and have a little wiggle room. But you see the teams highlighted. Oregon on the U.S. side. Japan and Italy on the international side are now eliminated from title contention. Which of the two teams will join them? Will it be Texas or California? A couple of American superpowers will play next. The loser can't win this year's title. High drama in our final elimination game on this Saturday. Carl Ravitch will have the call. He's joined by Kyle Peterson and Dallas Braden. It's a picture-perfect Saturday night. The boys from Texas and